Okay, so the issue was first joined <laughs> over a new set of racial classifications. Nothing new under the sun, but this was the first time that the Immigration Bureau itself, a child of the 1890s and the new immigration, right? Immigration Bureau set out to create a list of the races and peoples of Europe because it had become imperative to know to which races and peoples the new immigrants belonged. They were coming from Russia and Austro-Hungary. So that neither their nationality or place of birth, as the immigration forms then right, required them, gave you a clue in the racial vocabulary of the, mo of the era where they were coming from. Right? And to the nativists and the pro-new immigrant advocates alike, it was a given that the new immigrants belonged to races. They were not white ethnics. They were the Greek race, the Slavic race, the Hebrew race, the North Italian race, the Southern Italian races, very different races, right? Um, for all concerned, and for all concerned, uh, the notion of race did not follow the line we draw between biology and culture. Race, as they used it, ran in one's blood, but right was covered moral, emotional, intellectual, as well as physical traits. It covered human capacities like rationality and self-control and the very capacity for self-government. So it was highly salient as to whether one was fit for American citizenship. But in the 80s and 90s, we are still in a Lamarckian universe, right? The rediscovery of Mendelian genetics was only underway. So most thinkers, sophisticated and not, um, thought racial traits were at once heritable and changeable as the environment changed. So that the debate was not culture versus biology. The debate was just how changeable or how hardwired the racial traits of the new immigrant races was. And here figures like the patrician nativist Henry Cabot Lodge were confident that the racial traits of characters like us Hebrews um, were hardwired. And we were congenitally, although he wouldn't use a genetic discourse yet, we were by blood unfit for citizenship. But his friend Teddy Roosevelt right, um, would grow increasingly confident that the races of Southern and Eastern Europe, and the Hebrews in particular, were eminently assimilable and would make fine citizens, and as well as good workers. Um, but in the 80s and 90s, the issue was genuinely an open one for figures like Roosevelt, uh, even as figures like Lodge already knew what they would find when they used the list to mark every immigrant by his or her race. As soon as the um, Immigration Bureau announced the new list, right, the old Jewish elite rose in protest. So Simon Wolf marches into the TV Powderly's office in the Immigration Bureau in Washington and says, Jews are not a race. We are a religion. And you're singling out us out as a race and marking us as we enter the country. And Wolf accurately prophesied that these labels would quickly become the, the most important category by which the new immigrants were known. And it was bound to spawn anti-Semitism. And it was fundamentally wrong by his lights. Right? Hearings were called. Henry Cabot Lodge, no fool, right, had read the encyclopedia, the Jewish encyclopedia, right, <laughs> edited by reformed Jews. And even there, he could quote many learned Jews saying, of course, Jews are a race. And Lodge, so, and Lodge would say, and what about Disraeli? Is he a Jew? Right? And quickly twisted, Simon Wolf was not up to the debate with Henry Cabot Lodge. The, the Lodge could invoke right, Jews on the subject of race um, to the effect that Jews were a race, um, even as Wolf protested that we are undivided Americans, once we become Americans, undivided Frenchmen or Germans in the old country, and our Jewishness was merely um, our faith. It wasn't merely um, the Gentiles who lined up against the idea that Jews were um, only a religion, not a race, but Jews themselves. Both um, certain scholars within the 
older Jewish community. And increasingly, because this de debate, which I'm telescoping, actually unfolded over a decade or so, most vehemently as the new Jews, new Jewish immigrants right, assembled and created associations, um, both Zionist and otherwise, they were equally adamant that we are a people and a race and we should be counted as such. Hmm? So the issue became most bitterly heated over the census. The list went from the, from the gates and the manifestos that the steamship captains filled out and then the inspectors at the gates checked off to the Dillingham Commission's 42 volume research into the travels of the new immigrants into the heartland. And then the, the Dillingham Commission had the idea, let's put in the census. Let's start counting the European races all throughout the country. And at that point, Wolf and Kohler prevailed. Long story short, as they say, the sort of, they lost the battle in respect of the Dillingham Commission's categories, but they won it so that the census never reflected this class set of classifications of, of Jews, Greeks, Italians, and others as a race. But in their protests, right, one finds the secretary of the great German Jewish reform organization, the AJC, Herbert Friedenwald, saying so far as citizenship of the US is concerned, we know only the great divisions of the human family, white, black, American, and Indian, and others. Otherwise, he said, to count the European peoples as races will land us in justifying discrimination against certain classes of citizens, which will result in a destruction of the American idea of the equality of all citizens. So to paraphrase Dean Rudenstein, equality was divisible, right? And, and, the, and, the, and the, the, the line was between the white peoples of Europe who were not a race and to whom and to characterize as races would be to injure the great principle of equality and the great divisions of humankind um, as to whom it seems there was no destruction of the American idea of equality um, in so classified, right? One should hasten to say that this was not dogma among the German reformed Jewish elite. So for every Friedenwald who drew this line between the races of Europe who ought not to be classified as races and the great divisions of humankind, the color-coded divisions of humankind as to whom racial categories were appropriate, there was a Max Kohler who talked about racial humbug and spoke out against the racial classifications of the Asian Americans and the African Americans. And of course, there was Franz Boas, another German Jewish right, progressive, who was dismantling the categories of race from within, who was at work at Columbia University right, with his students, creating the culture concept, um, which would be a thoroughgoing critique of racial science and racial difference. Um, but we will see if we get there at the end of the story also in the precincts of the Upper West Side um, and the Lower East Side, social workers and sociologists trained by Boaz themselves, German reformed Jews, oy, 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 um, <laughs> creating a modern ethnic group idea, which to sort of foreshadow, I'm going to suggest is a new synthesis of the classic liberalism of the German Jewish reform elite and a more robust conception of peoplehood, which is really brought into their experience and their thought by the encounter with the new immigrants. Um, but I'm not sure we'll get there because I wanna, I wanna tell you about two other chapters in this movie. And all the settings are New York, as you, I hope you've noticed. This is, this is really a film script in the making rather than a law review article. Um, and,